Here we're going to solve problem f on code forces around 886. We were both children. In this problem, we have a group of n frogs, each of which hop on each multiple of ai for different values of ai. And we have to find the largest value of frogs that will be at some point at some time. To do this, let's look at each of the frogs. Each of the frogs are initially at positions a1, a2, all the way through an. This means that as time passes, each of the frogs, well, frog 1 will be at spots 2a1, 3a1, all the way to some number. Frog 2 will be at a2, 2a2, 3a2, and so on. And each of them will keep going to some multiple of ai until that multiple of ai is less than n. Thus, we have to find some m such that 1 is less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to n, and the maximal number of frogs pass through point M. This is equivalent to saying the maximal number of AI divide this number M as a frog goes through each multiple of AI. Now let's find an algorithm for this problem. To do this, we just need to find the number of frogs at point I after one moment in time, after which we can use the fact that this number must divide our final number to find the number of frogs that are at our final number at some point in time. So we can find the number of frogs at 1, frogs at 2, all the way to frogs at 10,000, all the way to frogs at n, or at most, frogs at 10, 2 times 10 to the 5th power. Thus, if we have k frogs at, with value ai, then we can add a k to ai, 2 a k to 2 ai, k to 3 ai, and so on, all the way as m times ai is less than or equal to n. Now, let's do a quick time complexity analysis. We know we initially have 2 times 10 to the 5th total um, values, or 2 times 10 to the 5th being the maximal value of n. So, in this case, we know we have 2 times 10 to the 5th over 1, plus 2 times 10 to the 5th over 2, and so on, which we can approximate to be about 2 times 10 to the 5th times the ln of this, which is clearly within our time limit. Now let's work on coding the problem. We initially have an integer t, which is the number of test cases. So we'll input into here, and we'll go through each of these test cases in a while loop. In each of these test cases, we're going to have an integer n, which we want to input into. And we want an array, which keeps track of the number of frogs with value a with value i, or the number of frogs um, that, for example, come to point 1, come to point 2, and so on. So we'll keep this information as a map for simplicity's sake, and now we'll iterate through each of our frogs' information. We'll input into their value, frogs' i value for ai, and we'll add 1 to whatever this value is in our value for multiples. Now we're going to compute the total number of frogs that pass through any point ai at any time. So to do this, we just need to find the sum of all the frogs that pass through any divisor of ai. So to do this, we can simply build up. For example, all the frogs at point 1 will pass through 1, 2, and so on. All the frogs at point 2 will pass through 2, 4, and so on. And we'll iterate through each of these values for i as follows. We'll iterate from i equals 1 through n, and then we'll have a while loop going through each multiple of i until we reach a value that's greater than n. So we'll keep track of this current multiple as kermult, and we'll keep make sure it stays less than or equal to n. And our total value at current value of multiple will add the number of frogs at point i, and then we'll iter iterate through our kermult and add i to kermult as we need to go i more spaces after going through the current sp space, since we're taking multiples of i. So we'll add one, or add i, uh, add mults i to total of kermult, because the total at kermult must be iterated by that number of frogs, and we'll go through the next multiple of i, which is kermult plus i. Finally, we have to keep track of an answer, so we'll keep track of an integer answer, and we know that at the end of each iteration, we are at the maximum number passing through the current value i, so we'll make sure our answer gets written as the max of what it previously was and the total value at point i. 
Finally, we'll output this answer and see what we get. Let's paste in the actual test case for the problem. And as you can see, we got the correct answer. Now let's put this into the Code Forces software. As you can see, when we submit to the Code Forces software, we get the correct answer. Thank you.